Previously, I made my first Arduino controlled circuit and my first simple program. In this video, I'm going to learn basic things about electronics, try to not lose my sanity designing a laser driver circuit, do some basic calculations and choose necessary components. Now, let's get back where we left off. When researching laser diodes, I quickly realized three things. One, since Arduino is a microcontroller, it is not ideal as a power source. It can supply 3.3 volts or 5 volts and maximum 40 mA per one pin and 200 mA across all pins. For now it would be enough, but in the future when we add more components, not so much. Two. We need to design a circuit that will power the laser diode. It is not as easy as adding resistors and sending enough current through a diode. I need to make laser driver circuit, we will talk more about it later. And finally, I don't have any idea how to do it. I spent a lot of time reading about components and how to connect them, but I understand like 15% of those words. That is why I've decided to start from the beginning, learning everything and writing it down for a future reference. Think fast, chocolates. First it is good to know what do we even want to do. To visualize it I'm going to use a block diagram. We need to power a laser diode, so power goes in and out to the ground. As a power source, I'm going to use 9 volts 1 ampere DC adapter with a barrel jack. And between those two, we need something that will regulate current from source to a laser diode. Add a capacitor at the beginning to eliminate spikes when connecting and disconnecting power. And that would be all that we need for a simple laser diode driver. Later, we could add a switch controlled by Arduino to turn it on and off, but let's leave it for the next video. Now we need to do some calculations and choose components. Let's talk about some basics. First, voltage and current. Voltage can be defined as potential energy difference between two points per unit charge. It is measured in joules per coulomb, which give us volts. In analogy to hydraulics, it can represent pressure of water in tank. Let's say we have a tank with 9 volts of constant pressure. So potential difference between maximum and minimum is 9 volts. So we can say that if we have a tank and voltage is our pressure, changes in voltage will change how far water can flow out of a tank. We can say that we can push 9 volts of charge through a circuit. Current on the other hand can be compared to a flow of water. It is expressed in amperes, which represent amount of charge flowing in time. And back to a tank, if we increase size of a hole at the bottom, more water can flow out. Length of a stream stays the same, but more water flows out creating thicker stream. Resistance can be summed up as a force that counteracts flow of a current. In water tank terms, resistance is size of a hole at the bottom of tank. Bigger hole equals lower resistance, so more current can flow out of a tank. The Ohm's law states that current through a conducting component is proportional to voltage at two points across this component. So resistance equals voltage divided by current. Now some basic components. Resistors are passive electrical components that add resistance to circuits. Their value is expressed in ohms. Resistors can be connected in series and their resistance adds up. So overall resistance increases or in parallel and we calculate it like this. In this case resistance is lower. Capacitors are passive electronic components that store electric charge. The most important characteristic of a capacitor is its capacitance, which is capability to store a charge. It is measured in farads and can be calculated by dividing charge by voltage. When connected in series, their capacitance lowers and in parallel it rises, opposite to resistors. Now the main component, laser diode and diodes in general. They have two leads, anode, positive lead and cathode, negative lead. Current can flow through the diode in one direction and not in the other. Their voltage current curve doesn't follow Ohm's law. While a resistor's curve is linear, diodes looks like this. We can divide it into three regions. One in the middle is a region at which current doesn't flow through a diode. This point is called breakdown voltage. After that diode 
node breaks down and doesn't work as intended, letting current go in a direction it shouldn't go. And lastly, point at which current can pass through a diode, called forward voltage. It specifies minimal voltage that we need to pass current through a diode. LED, for example, is a type of light emitting diode. Laser diodes are just like LEDs, but emit more coherent and unidirectional light in form of a laser. It is important to remember that LEDs and laser diodes draw more current when they heat up. When temperature rises, more current passes through a diode and temperature rises, until it fails. That is why to control LEDs and laser diodes, we need constant current. Voltage regulator is usually an integrated circuit that changes incoming voltage to desired output voltage, even when power from source or load from circuit changes. How does it work exactly? Like this. What does it mean? I don't know. But the most important parameters are input and output voltage, dropout voltage, maximum output current and thermal resistance. That should be enough to make a laser driver. So let's get to designing our circuit. First, I have a power source that provides 9 volts and 1 ampere. Is it optimal? I have no idea. But I have it already, so we are going to design around it. Next, the most important component, laser diode. I choose ADL65055TL, 5 milliwatts red light diode because that is the cheapest one that I found. In addition to laser diode, it has an integrated photodiode, but I am not going to bother with it for now. Threshold current varies from 18 to 25 amps, depending on temperature, and typical operating current equals 25 milliamps. Also operating voltage is 2.2 volts to 2.5 volts. So I need controlled current of 25 milliamps and to have at least 2.2 volts left after including the rest of the circuit. And this is where the voltage regulator comes in. I choose LM317 because it is compact, cheap, popular and most importantly adjustable. To make it into a current regulator we need to put a resistor in series that will generate a difference of 1.25 volts to adjust pin and to limit current to 25 milliamps. Now our source is 9 volts. We can see that minimal difference between input and output is 3 volts. Then we need 1.25 volts at a resistor and around 2.5 volts at diode. So 9 volts minus 3 minus 1.25 minus 2.5 and we have 2.25 volts left. It is enough for our circuit. Now we know that voltage drop through resistor is 1.25 volts and we need 25 milliamps of current. Using Ohm's law we can calculate that we need resistance of 50 ohms. And lastly, adding capacitor in parallel just after source should prevent unwanted quick rises in voltage when powering on and off this circuit. I choose 0.1 microfarads because it is what I found in datasheet for LM317. Now let's simulate this circuit in LTSpice and see if it does what it should do. This is our power source, 9 volts, capacitor, here is the voltage regulator, here is the resistor that is connected to the adjust pin, and here is laser diode. Actually it is a LED because there is no laser diode in LTSpice. Now we can see that here at the input we have 9 volts, then at the output we have 4.6 volts, and here after the resistor the voltage should be 1.25 volts lower and it is this resistor should be 25 milliamps and it is here there should also be 25 milliamps and it is even if I change values of this diode let's say for something for something smaller run it again there should also be 25 milliamps and there is 25 milliamps and voltage should change now we have 3.36 volts here and there should be also 1.25 volts difference here and yes there is a difference 
with everything working as it should, I could order all components. I will need laser diode, LM317, one microfarad capacitor and one 50 ohm resistor. Or we could connect a few in series or parallel. In the next video I'm going to build this circuit and I will try to add Arduino controlled MOSFET switch. Remember that I am just a beginner, so not everything may be working as intended. Subscribe and like this video. Have any tips how to use MOSFETs as switches or about this circuit? Share it in comments. It would be a huge help. Check out the previous video in this series if you didn't already. See you in the next one.